in the late 50s and 60s, there was a man who played football for the Green Bay Packers. Billy, you put that up later. Take it down now. Please. His name was Max McGee, and he played for the Green Bay Packers. He played end, and he was the punter. He was okay. He wasn't a starter, uh, but he played for them when they were very good. And at Super Bowl I, he was there, but he broke team rules, if you're familiar with the story. He broke team rules, and him and his friend went out on the town all night long. Came back, snuck into the hotel in the middle of the night, woke up with a hangover and dehydrated. And he said to the starting end, said, hey, listen, don't get hurt because I'm hungover and I'm out of shape. And he had lost his helmet as well. Well, it turns out after the second offensive drive, he got hurt. The, the starting end got hurt. Now, at the time, the Green Bay Packers head coach was a guy named Vince Lombardi. And Vince Lombardi was this salty, little squatty Italian guy from Brooklyn. He was a, he was a devout Catholic, actually. He went to Catholic school his whole life, went to Catholic university, taught in Catholic schools. But then he became an assistant coach at Army before he became the head coach at Green Bay. So when the starting end went down and they needed to replace him, Vince Lombardi, Coach Lombardi said in that kind of guttural Brooklyn voice, McGee, get in the game. McGee, get in the game. And so he fumbled around, borrowed a helmet, and got in the game. He made seven receptions, scored two touchdowns, and was voted the MVP of the player of the game. So my question is for all, for all of us, for all of you, what does it mean for a Christian to get in the game? What does that mean? What is this? Is life a game? It's kind of. Now, for any athlete a world-class athlete, a professional athlete, one of the things he has to have a love for is a love for the game. He's not going to do it if he doesn't love the game. They have to love to win, love to train, and are competitive. So for a Christian, someone who calls themselves a devout Christian, we must love the Lord, love the church, but also want to win. Win what? Win who? And for who? In some ways you can say, Christ has already defeated the evil one. However, we're asked to win souls, to win freedom, and give people meaning, and that there is an opponent, there is an enemy. And their side is extremely organized, extremely organized, and they do not sleep. But we're not just on a team, we're in a family. And we have been adopted in that royal family where the people of God, he is our, Jesus is our Lord, our God, our groom. And then what he says to the apostles, he wants us to be witnesses. What is a witness? So we get the term martyr from that word. We'll get to what they were doing in just a second. So kind of to switch from the image of football, you've seen this image. Now, Billy, you can put it up. We kind of, when I, we were making this, there was a list that said, it looks like a baseball diamond. But I, you're going to get sick of this because I'm going to be pounding at home. It's good for us to remind it, what is the most important thing we do here? What is the most important thing I do as a priest is to say the Mass, to offer the sacrifice of the Mass. Don't ever forget that. And at that home base, the most important thing we do are the sacraments, salvation, an encounter with Christ, 
an actual, nuptial, tangible encounter in Christ. And of the seven sacraments, there is one that is most important, and that is the Eucharist. So right now, you're, you're all at home. Good for you. This is good for me. Good for all of us. But in our baptism, we have been adopted. And in the Eucharist and in the confirmation, we are sent. But the sacraments are meant to launch us and to catch us. It's meant to launch us into evangelization and catechesis. The second most important thing we do here, to evangelize and catechize. And they're not the same thing. Oh, they, they work with each other. They presuppose each other. They make each other possible. But oftentimes, they're absolutely separate. Catechesis is to learn about Jesus, to learn about the church, to be able to explain, defend, and protect the church and the teachings of the faith. Evangelization is to be excited about your faith, to be excited about it, to be on fire for it, because that's always happened separately. I know men and women who have three or four bracelets on their wrists because they've gone to three or four Acts retreats, text retreats, Steubenville retreats, awakenings, you name it. And they're in love with the Lord, and that's great. But you ask them, what are the Gospels? Uh, Paul or something? No. Do you know what the, the, the sacraments of initiation? Are you aware of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the seven deadly sins? Well, no. No, but I love Jesus. That's great. Believe it or not, on the other side of that, I know people who are very well catechized. Go to any Christian Catholic university in their religious department. There are people there who know the faith back and forth. They're not buying it. They're not excited about it. They teach it because it's really interesting. It was a theologian who said, religion is far too interesting to let Christians have it all. I was working at a Catholic school for a year or so. And I, we took the kids to confession about once a month. Second, third, fourth, fifth, only to find out the teachers don't go to confession. Half the teachers didn't go to mass on Sundays. Some of them weren't married in the church. They were catechized, but they weren't evangelized. That's a scandal. It happens. But once you're evangelized and catechized, then it's time to be discipled or disciple somebody. Back to Max McGee. Max McGee loved football. He loved it. And he knew all about it. Those guys in those days, they memorized statistics. Ask a baseball fan. They know who had the most home runs in 1979. But he wasn't always in shape. He had to go to practice. He had to be discipled, disciplined, honed, pushed. And then... And then when it was time when the opponent showed up, it was time to get in the game. Now, as we see from Super Bowl I, he convinced he wasn't ready. I don't have what it takes. He'd been out all night. He lost his helmet. Little did he know, no, you were ready. McGee, get in the game. Get in the game. Now, in the gospel today, I think it's fair to ask us, where are, they, where are they on this? And where are all of you? Where am I? Where are we at on this? And if we can't find ourselves to pray about it, because that little thing in the church, that's us. We're one of those places. When Jesus walks in, the resurrected Jesus, he finds them. They have been evangelized and catechized. They've even been sacramentalized. They received their communion. They were baptized. And what does he say to them? Why are you startled? Why are you terrified? Why are you trembling? I need you to get in the game. They needed maybe a little bit more discipleship, but it took the Holy Spirit to send them out on mission. And for those of us who received and baptized and confirmed, where is our mission field? And we recognize also that like them, some people don't want to get out there. I was a player and a coach. I remember kids going, hey, coach, don't put me in. I don't know what I'm doing. 
and they like sitting on the bench. They just assume suit up and that's it. But that is not what we are called to. Now, having said that, when I say go out on mission, I'm not talking about necessarily always converting the Jew, the Muslim, the atheist, the agnostic, the Protestant. I'm not, that has its place. But I think many of us are still in that first and second base. We have to shore up our own people before we head out on mission. We have to do a better job as coaches and teachers. The Pew study just came out from Georgetown again. These studies are from 2019. It said simple issues that we think we're all together on, like life, abortion. They took a, a survey and they found that 70% of people who don't go to Mass every week, 70% of Catholics who don't go to Mass every week, are pro-choice. That's awful. That is unacceptable and unbelievable. But it said that only 30%, it uses the term only, of Catholics who go to Mass every week are pro-choice. That means one out of every three Catholics that sit in our pews are okay with killing unborn babies in their mother's wombs, sacrificing children to the demon Moloch. That is devastating. But I would also argue, where are we disciplers in this? Where has the bishops, priests, deacons, catechists, that all of a sudden the regular mass goer is in favor of these awful things. That's a reflection on us. Because I think we think of being Christian as just being nice. I think that happened a few decades ago. You know, Jesus is kind, but he was not nice. He was not. He was a man. But he also was God. And I want to ask you to notice what Vince Lombardi didn't say to Max McGee. Now, Max, we don't want you to do anything you're not comfortable doing. You know, we, we want you to feel safe and comfortable, and when you feel ready, you know, he said, get in the game, son! There was no... I think we've become a little bit soft in that area. I no longer ask anybody, would you like to, or would you feel comfortable doing fill in the blank? I don't ask that. I said, are you willing, are you brave enough to set out on mission, whatever your mission field may be? Because we're asked, just like them, don't be scared. Don't be troubled, don't be terrified. It doesn't mean that you're not going to feel any kind of anxiety when it comes to sharing your faith. Especially our young people in their schools that are constantly bombarded by a culture of death. And sometimes they're the only student in that classroom. I know because they tell me and I hear about it. So we're asked, if you're not catechized, get yourself catechized. That may mean getting the Bible in the ear, getting the catechism in the ear. To find a group of like-minded people, get in a discipleship group or something like that of like-minded people. Frequent the sacraments. And I would say those of you, especially thank you for those ladies who went on the Acts retreat. That's where we evangelize people. The men who are going on that retreat, that's where you open yourself to evangelization. That's when you're set on fire, when you come away with Jesus. And then hopefully you want to learn more about him. You want to learn more about him. Because Jesus says to his apostles, you are my witnesses. I don't have any other ones. You are his witnesses. You are on the team. You're in the family. You're in the crew. So get in the game. 